Check Sports. Brought to you by Pennzoil Easy Lube, Bay and Douglas, and Jacklin Road in Langford. Time to turn things over to sports now, and Dustin Forbes joins us. Dustin, you uh, you got some sad news from the hockey world. Yeah, not the news that uh, you probably want to hear, no. Paul, but uh, Team Canada kicked off the elimination round today against Slovakia at the Men's World Hockey Championships in Finland. Canada edged Slovakia in the round robin, beating them 3-2 to two back in their tournament opener. But the Slovaks would get the last laugh and get some revenge in this one as they have sent the Canadians packing. Not too many people expecting an early exit for the Canadians. They led Group A with a 6-0 record. And uh, not that great. We pick it up. 2-2. Alex Burrows, the Vancouver Canuck, gets Canada the lead. It's 3-2. Now tied at 3 in the third. Canadian captain Ryan Getzlaff delivers a questionable hit on Yuri Mitsu. Gets left handed a five in a game. Ensuing faceoff, and Slovakia makes him pay. Michael Hanzus, a deflection past Cam Ward. That would be the winner. 4 3 Slovakia. The first time they advanced to the semis since 2000. Canada, they get the boot for the third straight year in the corners. Quarters, rather. <laughs> uh, United States and Sweden also knocked out today, but not what Canada was expecting. Sticking with hockey, this of the Stanley Cup playoff variety from last night. New York Rangers and Ilya Kovalchuk snipes one home for the Devils. They lead 1-0 in the Battle of the Hudson this game too. Now Mark Stahl a blast. It ricochets off the end wall and goes off Marty Broder and in. It looked at first as though Stepin would get it but uh, it would be the Devils who strike again. David Clarkson the agitator gets the goal and that would be the winner. Devils get the split and win 3-2. To lacrosse now, and the Victoria Shamrocks kick off their 63rd season Friday night as they cross the pond to take on the Burnaby Lakers. The Rocks will need to fill some holes up front this year with the loss of sniper Reese Dutch, but for the team, they are hoping for big things from Corey Small. The Victoria Shamrocks are hard at work in advance of their season opener on Friday night. Yeah, question, question. And while the on-court chemistry is important, so too is the chemistry in the room. Through all the teams I've played on, this is probably going to be one of the closest this summer. A uh, bunch of guys living here, you know, d putting in uh, putting in their effort to, you know, to get to know all the new guys and out-of-towners and, and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's been real nice so far. One player that will be noticeably absent on Friday is Corey Small. Funny man in front, nice pass and a nice goal! And it is, in fact, Corey Small. The 25-year-old plays for the Edmonton Rush in the National Lacrosse League and will take on the Rochester Nighthawks in the league final on Saturday. Kind of a surprising season. We started off real slow going 2-7, and seven actually, to start the year and um, kind of picked up coming in the second half of the season and then, you know, had, had two terrific playoff games and now look what happens. You end up in the final, so... We're, we're excited for sure. Yeah, we're going to miss Corey for the for the first game uh, Friday in Burnaby, but uh, he's got a pretty important game to play the next night. So we're we're going to be cheering him on, and uh, you know we're glad for Corey. It's always nice to have a, a Shamrock in the in the Pro League final. It's awesome. While small in stature, Corey packs a big punch on the court, having led the Rocks in scoring last year with 29 goals and 70 points. He will likely be a key contributor again this year. Well, last year was my first year with the Shamrocks, and you know I loved I loved playing here. The tradition behind the, the whole Shamrocks organization is is unbelievable, um, and I mean obviously I'm, I'm excited for the the NLL championship, but I, I'm very excited to come back and play with the Shamrocks this year. There's a bunch of special players in this league, and uh, to play alongside one of them like uh, Corey, it's pretty special. And uh, you know there's um, you just don't want to take it for granted. You know what I mean? Though Corey will miss the season opener on Friday, he will be back for the home opener on May 25th, and the Shamrocks can expect big things from a small addition. The Island High School Track and Field Championships wrapped up today at UVic Centennial Stadium, and it was a very successful two days with many records being broken, including a new island record in the Javelin set by Lambrick Park's Mason Coretzi. He tossed it 62.62 meters, breaking the old record of 61.68 set back in 2000. Coretzi also picked up the award for male standout athlete. I've been working uh past four years in this and this year is really coming together really well so 
Yeah, la end of last year was really good. Made the Canadian junior team, came third there and broke a youth record. And uh, after that, everything started to come together really well. 12th stage of the Giro d'Italia went this morning. A nice little 155 kilo kilometer ride. Victoria's rider Hedgedahl came into the day in second place, 17 seconds back of the leader, and he would remain there. Today's stage was won by Danish rider Lars Bach, who broke away with a pack of, of, of about two kilometers left. Nobody would catch him as he wins stage 12 by 11 seconds. Hedgedahl finished about three minutes later with the main pack and crossed the line in 19th spot, but so too did the rest of the pack. And uh, so it wasn't really that costly. So with that, we take a look at the overall standings. Ryder sitting there in second behind Joaquin Rodriguez, 17 seconds back. Tomorrow's stage is flat, of course, stage 13. On Saturday, they move back to the mountains and that is where Ryder will hope to gain some ground and try and catch Rodriguez. Some tough names there to pronounce. Yes, gotta uh, love those. Gotta go back to the uh, Team Canada there. So, what does this mean? I mean, you said third year they've been knocked out in the quarter. Should we be hitting the panic button as uh, Canadian hockey, or is it just because some of the best players isn't there? What's the deal? Well, you could say that, but there's a lot of talk about uh, going in with all the young guys and seeing what they were going to do. So, we'll see what happens. No Crosby, of course, and. Uh, Roberto Luongo wasn't there. So no, that... <laughs> no Luongo. They should be winning these games. Then. Exactly. Right. All right. Cam Ward not up to snuff. Well, thank you very much, Dustin. We'll be right back with one last look at weather. Stay with us.